pray before we start? Okay, God, thank you so much for this morning. God, I ask you to be with us this morning, God. I thank you so much, Lord. Even we lost now, but people just come early this morning, Lord. I thank you because you are good. Lord, I thank you because of people's heart, Lord, Father, that they come early to worship you this morning. Lord, we praise you this morning. We worship you this morning, Jesus. That you deserve to be worshipped. You deserve to be glorified, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. the king 
Lord, I ask you, Lord, to touch our hearts this morning. Open our minds this morning. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you, Jesus.
bondage to fear, but the spirit of light. The fear is the spirit that communicates, can communicate to him. The spirit can understand him. So we could call him Abba, Father. So we are God's children. Think about that. Just think about that for a moment. That we are God's children. You are the son and your daughter. You are his son and his daughter. You are you are the perfectly made. You are made in his images. According to his likeness. Lord, we thank you so much, Father, for this morning that we have the privilege to call you Abba, Father. We have the privilege to call you Dad, Father. Lord, so we know that you are with us all the time. You watch over us day and night, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. That you are good. That you have been so, so faithful to us. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the blessing that we have in our lives. We thank you for the protection. We thank you for this morning. We thank you. We just want to say thank you, God. We just want to say we love you, God. Because we are Father. recall that it was spring forward and so made on time and I'm glad you guys made on time and it's so good to see some faces from from back in the good old days uh, it's been it's been encouraging seeing some of your journey and progress keeping up to date with you on on Facebook and seeing your your spiritual growth so it's great to see you guys back and, and just want to encourage you and commend you on your continued growth we are going to be in Luke 16 this morning. Luke 16. And we're talking about doves and snakes. If you guys are familiar with the progression of logic and philosophy and how our minds operate, one thing you'll realize is that the Western world operates off a very dichotomous form of thinking. And... In a lot of arguments, if, if you guys trace a lot of what's happening in, in different arguments, you'll, you'll see this idea of, of a false dichotomy. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go through not only this passage, but just broadly in general. A lot of times people will press us into this either-or mentality when really it's, it's both and. And for us, as we look through Luke, and as we conduct ourselves in our Christian lives, we're going to realize that these two elements are incredibly important. It's not always one, and it's not always the other, but it's a balance of both, and oftentimes it's a tricky balance. But we need to navigate through that 
balance. I, uh, <coughs> I want to teach you a, a new word this morning in, in addition to that new concept. And, and it's a Greek word, and I want to challenge you to, to use it in a conversation or use it in a sentence this week. It's, it's the Greek word phronimus. You can say that. You can repeat that with me. Say it, phronimus. It, it sounds, it just rolls off your, your tongue pretty well. So this week, just go up to someone and say, man, you're, uh, you're mighty phronimus this week. You're looking pretty phronimus. That's the challenge, and, and, and we're going we're gonna to unpack what that word means because it's an important word, and it's almost unusual in the context that it's used in. Um, but, but I, I want to give you an idea of, of what it might mean. I was looking for a new printer this week, and I thought I'd get myself, I'd treat myself and, and get a laser printer because they were on sale as well, but it was still a little bit out of my price range. But I saw on Staples that if you, if you signed up for their email list, then you would get $10 off if it was more than $50. So I signed up for that and, and got $10 off, and I thought, whoa, that's, that's pretty cool. I've got more than uh, one email address. I'm going to sign up again. So I signed up again and then called them up and said, hey, can you apply this other discount code? And they said, yeah, sure. So I got $20 off. I thought, whoa, man, I've got another email address. I'm going to go ahead and sign up again. So I did that and I ended up getting 30 bucks off and, and went ahead and bought it. And I thought to myself, that was, that was pretty phronimous of me. To give you an idea of what we might be talking about, let's jump to Luke 16. We're going to begin in verse 1 and go through to verse 10. Let me pray for us as we begin. God, I thank you so much for my brothers and sisters here and just how you've walked with us through the years to be able to, to reconnect with old friends, to connect with new friends, and to be bound together because of our faith in you, uh, that regardless of what we go through, that you're always there, you're always that glue, that bond that pulls us together and that holds us to you. We thank you for your forgiveness, for your grace, and we pray this morning that you would continue to give us tools to grow in our spiritual walk. We thank you so much in the name of Christ. Amen. And that is the goal for us as we come here every Sunday, just to, to find new tools to develop our spiritual strength, to develop our spiritual walk. And, and I want to boil it down each week to one different concept. Last week we talked about patterns, right? How to build that pattern for your life. And I hope you spent last week doing that. And this week we're going to look at this, this idea of doves and snakes. In Luke 16, Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig. It's probably a hipster. And I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 450. Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commanded the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy with handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? You're probably starting to make connections of that word phronimus, right? It's this word shrewd. And it can be used 
as, as cunning, as clever, as savvy, as strategic. What's interesting is that it's the same word that's used to describe someone early on in the garden, if you can remember that the serpent was more shrewd than any other animal. And here we are seeing a commendation for being shrewd. And it throws a lot of people for a loop. What's going on? Is, is, is Jesus saying we should, be, we should be unjust like this manager? And of course not. Jesus isn't commending the unjustness, but he's, he's pulling something out. He's saying there's still something that's good in there. And isn't that the gospel, that, that God and Jesus can look into a messy situation and still see an element of good that there's always something that can be redeemable. And what's redeemable here is the way that this manager goes about doing things. There's an element of cleverness. And it's not me saying this. This is in, in Scripture as well. What does Jesus say? He says, be, be gentle as doves, but be, be shrewd as serpents or snakes. And so we see this balance between the two. And we see this big trajectory, this big picture of what our life looks like, that essentially this manager is getting fired from one position and he's moving to another position. And in between, he, he hustles, he uses shrewdness, savviness. And that's essentially a picture of what we're going through. We're all moving from one position, from one job, from being a slave to one old master and moving towards a new. We've all been fired, in a sense, from this world, and we're moving towards that eternal home. That's what Jesus says later on, so that you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Look, you've left this world, and you're moving towards eternal dwellings. And in between, this is what I want you to do with what you have with your worldly riches, with your possessions. This is what I want you to do. And not just what I want you to do, but how I want you to do it. Jesus is saying, dig a little deeper. I don't want you just to discard that and, and, and just throw that all away and, and, and just count that all as, as worthless. Yes, I want you to do that. But there's a specific way. There are some specific rules we need to recognize in the world that we are in. And he's saying that, that the sons of this world are, are more shrewd than the sons of light. They play by different rules. These, these pagans, they're, they're bad. But we need to pick up on some of their rules that, that, they, that they play by. And we need to be shrewd and savvy and clever in our dealings with them. He warns against that, that element that we're caught up in. When I was... In the last couple of years, as, as work, I picked up some freelance writing work and I was writing for a magazine called entrepreneur.com and just studying all the strategies of the business world. And one interesting thing I came across was, was Amazon. They had groups that would launch products on Amazon and the, the top listings and the things that are on the top page are rarely usually the best quality products. But this is what they do. They bring a group of people together we all form a group and, and we say, okay, Randy's got a product, guys, and he wants to launch it. So when he launches it, Amazon have these different algorithms in order to, uh, to boost whatever comes up first. There are different strategies, the amount of sales within a certain window of time, and they figure out all of these things. So we all get together. We say, we're going to support Randy in this product launch. He launches his product on the first day. We all make a purchase, 50 of us, and we all give a five-star review, boost the thing to the top of the page. And then we do the same for Ty. We do the same for, um, for the next person. And this is how they boost it up to the top. So the, the top 10 really aren't always the greatest products. Yes, every now and then you get the good product come up, but, but there's that that cunning strategy behind it. And we need to realize that this is the world we live in. We can't go around just as doves, just as, as gentleness and, and loving yes to one another. But Jesus is saying we need that shrewdness and wisdom that the snake possessed 
when we navigate through life as well. Think of Jesus, right? When he went into the, the temple and he saw the money handlers, what did he do? He flipped over the tables. Let's jump to the next slide, Stephanie. And here we see in verse 10, go back to verse 10 with me. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. And here this is how Jesus describes being trustworthy with worldly riches. How do we show our trustworthiness to God? And so God measures your trustworthiness in worldly wealth by the quality of relationships you build. And he says that in verse 9, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. That's how God measures our trustworthiness. Because essentially, the kingdom is built around relationships. The gospel is conveyed through relationships. That's, that's the currency. That's the, the wealth in God's economy. The relationships you build. And, and a lot of us are saying, yeah, God, I, 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 don't have, I don't have much money. Sure, a lot of us are students, and, and, and I get that we don't have it. But I want you to think about what you would consider valuable in your life. You may not have money, but you've got other things that you value. For some of it, it's, it's your time. A lot of you put value on your time. And how do you give that to build relationships? How do you, go, how do you show God that you can be trusted with wealth? And you use that by giving these other things. If you don't have money, be able to, to give your skills. Think through the last few weeks and how, how much of of what you value have you been able to put towards building relationships? If we're stewards and, and, and God is the manager that we're working for, He's wanting to see relationships being built. And He wants to see us using savviness, using strategy. Start thinking outside of the box on how you can use your skills to develop relationships. Start becoming creative and savvy because the world we live in treat each other with great shrewdness. Phronimus, make that your word this week. How can I be clever? How can I be crafty? How can I be strategic? As we move from being fired from this world to moving towards that eternal home. And we all want those blessings. Jesus is saying here, you can't be trusted with little. How do you expect me to give you much? How do, how do you expect me to give you those great riches? Move to the next slide. So we see here in Scripture, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Mmm, wine. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. So we're looking at two things today. We're looking at, at the what. What does want God want us to give? But we're also looking at the how. To think outside of the box, to be shrewd, to be clever in how you give your riches. We live in a culture of, of instant gratification, right? Of overnight success, of instant results. God is saying, I, I know you crave for, for big things. I know you crave for better things. But I want you to think now of what you've got immediately. What are the little things you've got? And in order for you to be effective with the little you've got, you've got to be a little more strategic. You've got to be a little more crafty. You've got to think outside the box. And that's what I want to challenge you with this week. As we go through, as you go through your week, as you think through the people in your life, how do you develop these relationships? How do you, how do you make friends in order to point them 
to the kingdom. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what matters. There's a journalist for the New York Times who wrote a really profound, widely shared article. And he's probably bordering on, on, I guess, a spiritual person. It's not clear whether he's Christian or not. But he's entrenched in the world. But he comes to this epiphany, this realization. He's, He's older in age and, and, and has lived and gone through a lot, but he compares two things. He, he looks back at his life and he looks at the lives of those around him and he says, I see two categories. I see people who build resume virtues and I see people who build eulogy virtues and those who have meaning and significance in their life have spent their life building eulogy virtues rather than resume virtues. And it's not that much different from what Jesus explains here. That when you become a Christian, you become fired from that world of resume virtues, of accumulation, of materialism, of seeing how much I can gain, how many skills I can build, what my resume looks like. You get fired from that and you get hired into a world that's built on eulogy virtues, not about how much you can achieve in life, but the amount of people you impact in your life. To be able to to come to the end of your life and to think, who's going to be at at my funeral? Am I going to be that person with a five-page resume with these colourful qualifications, but yet have no one, not win any friends, not build relationships that are built on Christ? Or am I going to have those eulogy virtues? Which means being trusted in what God has given you and taking all of that and being shrewd about it. Not just just wildly throwing it out there, but being strategic about it. I hope Juholm doesn't mind me sharing this, but we went and had breakfast yesterday at Denny's. And... And as we, we left, there was a, a guy on a bicycle that came up and, and he said, hey, um, you know, can, can you guys give me some, some money for, for food? And, and I didn't have any money on me, but I mean, within two seconds, Juhong pulled out a $20 note and just handed it to this guy. I was like, can I have 20 bucks too, Juhong? <laughs> but I went home and I was in, in, in the scripture again thinking through this and it was just a reminder and encouragement that, that he's set on that eternal home. He's, he's moving away from worldly riches and, and he's investing worldly riches into what's going to bring him closer to that eternal home. But that we got to spend 10, 15 minutes with him afterwards. It wasn't just, here's $20, get out of here. It was his $20. Tell me your story. What's going on with your life that you're in this cycle of of probably going to Denny's every week and and trying to to just go week by week trying to find some food? What's your story, man? Tell us what's going on. How do we make a friend out of this person and point him towards the kingdom? So that's what I want to challenge you with in in whatever you possess. I want to give you this imagery of of viewing all of that as seeds. Your time as a seed. However much money you can spare as a seed. Your material possessions, your car as a seed. Now think about it. A seed, if you just hold on to it, that's all you're going to have. You're going to have seeds. But the minute you let go and you plant it and you water it, It's going to multiply and grow. And Jesus is saying that with your lives and everything in your possession. Let's let's not deny that we want more and that's absolutely okay. God is a God of more and he wants to bless us. Look at these verses in Proverbs. God is saying, I want to give you more. Not just materially, but spiritually, emotionally, joy, all of those things. I want to give you more. But you're holding on to these things simply as seeds and I want you to plant them, to water them and let me multiply them. 
but I'm going to give you a strategy of how as well. And that's to do it with shrewdness. Remember, we're still in a broken world that functions off broken rules and the sons of this world are more shrewd than the sons of light. And we need to keep that in mind. Not just what to do, but how to do it. And I want you to think about what you're building your life around. You've been fired from the old world of resume virtues. You've been adopted and you're moving towards eulogy virtues. Now how do we use the wealth and everything that we have to win friends towards that goal? If we want to participate in God's mission, that's what we need to do. We're to be gathering, building relationships and building them, pointing them towards God. So as we close, let's, let's think of that. Think of the one thing that you value and how you're going to be strategic and, and cunning and creative about using that to build relationships. I want to give you a challenge, one skill, one thing you value, one relationship for this next week. How do you set time aside in your school, in your workplace, to use the thing that God has given you to develop that one relationship? And I promise that God is going to open up some incredible doors for you. And that promise isn't based on any of my, my possessions or, or, or any skill or anything that I have or any qualifications I have. That promise is based on, on God's word. God has said this. Move to that final slide as I pray for us. Just to remember this, behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents as, and innocent as doves. Phronimus, shrewdness. That's your word for this week in the final slide. To remember that it's a balance of both. So don't be all dove and no snake and fall into to weakness. Don't be all snake and no dove and lead into pridefulness and being disconnected. It's a balance of both. So as you go out, as we conduct our Christian life, as we remember these eulogy virtues, as we navigate through life, through the brokenness of life, I want you to be doves and snakes, to be gentle but tempered with wisdom, to be wise but tempered with gentleness as well. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for my brothers and sisters and for this parable that you've given us that, that you've praised and given us something to think about and that's how do we be shrewd as we conduct our lives? How do we be clever and creative and insightful and strategic and savvy? How do we do all of those things while being connected to the mission that you've given us to use the wealth and the resources you've given us to, to make friends, to win friends towards the kingdom. And that's what I pray for each and every one of us here this morning, that we would win friends in a meaningful way that would point them towards the kingdom, that as we participate in the mission that you've given us, that we would experience rich blessings and rich joy. We thank you for Christ and we pray that your Holy Spirit would equip us this week to go about celebrating who you are in our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.